What's going on guys and welcome to my new Blender startup file. Now a lot of you have downloaded my prior startup file which is currently on Gumroad. I'm, I'm about to update this now with the new startup file. So um, yeah, let me walk you through it. So first things first, straight away you might notice that we have the colored collections. Now if you want Blender 2.91 Alpha, you'll be able to have the colored collections. If not, no problem. If you're still on Blender 2.9 to even 2.8, 2.83, don't worry. You'll still have all of the collections. It just won't be colored. So I'm about to walk you through everything that we have. First things first, on the right hand side, you will see that we have Studio. Now, I got tired of creating studios over and over and over again for some of my renders. So I've just included it in a default startup file. So whenever I start a render, I have the option to just quickly start up a studio if I want to. So by default, it's turned off. You can't see it in the viewport. You can't see it in a render. And to see it in the viewport or the render, all you need to do is select these three. Bang. And there we go. We have <laughs> a studio straight away. We literally have a studio in a viewport. I've got all of the lights here. If we open it up. You can see I've separated it to the lights and the studio. You can change the intensity of the lights. These are all soft boxes, soft lights. It's kind of like a real world um, lighting scenario and situation I've done here, I've gone for. It's about four meters, um, four meters wide. So yeah, there's the studio. <laughs> it's super useful. Let me show you some of the renders that I've used just with the studio setup, same lighting, everything. You can see that I've done a lot of abstract renders, product renders, renders of clothes, you name it, using this exact same studio setup. So we have that. I'm just going to deactivate that real quick and close that collection. Perfect. Next, we have the normal camera. So by default, we've got a camera here in our viewport. I've already set one up and I've set it up for the aspect ratio of Instagram. So that resolution is 1350 by 1080, as you can see here. But if you like doing a widescreen or 4K, for example, I have workspaces dedicated for that. So I'll go through in a minute. But this specific scene here, as you can see at the top here, IG for Instagram, it's optimized for Instagram. So this camera here controls what you see in the viewport on the left hand side. And that's the camera view. So if I move the camera back and forth, you can see that it's moving real time on the left hand side because I like always being able to see what the camera sees in real time. I like being able to see my final output. It's just useful for me. If it's useful for you, great. If not, you could always close this. But yeah, as I was saying, we have the camera right here and here in the viewport It's colored red. And I've also got depth of field by default it's turned off so you can't see it but I've mapped the camera to an empty, which controls the depth of field. So if we click onto the camera and we go down to the camera properties, all you need to do is scroll down, select depth of field and bam, the depth of field is connected to the empty. And I'm going to show you quickly an example of that. Here you can see we have a quick scene I put together with two potion bottles. By the way, if you want me to make a video about how to create these potion bottles, then let me know in the comments below. But yeah, so I've turned the depth of field on. So I've gone to camera, I've scrolled down to camera properties, I've turned depth of field on. By default, the focus object is the empty. So this, this depth of field empty that we have in our outliner. And all you need to do is literally move it. So as you can see on the left hand side, the potion bottle in front is in focus. If I move the empty towards the back, you can see the potion bottle at the back is in focus. If I move it back to the front, front is in focus, back is in fo focus, front focus, back focus, front focus, back focus, and so on and so forth. <laughs> the reason why I've done this is because when I'm doing animations and specific cinematic renders, it's a lot more efficient to have it mapped to an empty and I can control the depth of field that way. So I can snap it onto different objects rather than going to my camera, going to the properties, having it not on, a, on the object and just animating the distance. That seems a lot more time consuming and it's not necessarily as accurate. So by default, I have mapped it to an empty, which controls the depth of field. All you need to do is enable it in the settings down here and yeah, you're good to go. Oh, by default, you'll notice that the depth of field is a little bit different. I've changed the ratio to eight, which kind of gives off a anamorphic style look, which is something I enjoy because I like to shoot anamorphic in real life. So I'd like to emulate that in this renders as much as possible. If you don't like that, all you need to do is change the ratio back to one and you get more of a depth of field to which you're used to, more of a spherical depth of field that you see in photos. So yeah. Okay. 
you might have already seen now, <laughs> but we're now in a different workspace. We'll go back to the default start file and I'll show you. Okay, so we are back. The next thing you will notice is above the normal camera, we have a track camera. So I'm just gonna disable my camera tab here, close that collection, open up the track camera collection and enable it. Now, this looks quite similar. We still have the same camera, but now this is mapped to this focus empty. Essentially what this means is if I grab this camera and let me just enable it and I move it around, you can see on the left hand side, <laughs> it's tracking along the empty. I've named the empty focus. So if you move the focus around, the camera follows it. I've done this fire constraints. Now this is incredible and it's so useful for me because if I'm doing specifically product render shots or kind of smooth animations, all I need to do is grab this empty, put it towards an object and use the track camera and the camera will always follow it no matter where I move it in the locations. And you can really get some, <laughs> some cool, some really, really cool cinematic movements with this. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here, enable auto key in. I'm going to press space bar and I'm just going to move this. Play that back. Let's see what craziness we have. Right now it's not looking smooth. So let me smooth that out real quick. Oh, zero. Look at that. Look how much smoother that looks. <laughs> and that looks insane. I could even, let me change this mesh, change it to like Susanna Monkey. And you can see we have this kind of like robotic camera movement. Anyway, we're going off topic here. That's not why we're here. We're here for the start file. But essentially we have a track camera, which tracks to this focus. It's constrained to this focus. So if you ever want to quickly get a tracking shot, and you don't want to mess up your main camera all you need to do is go to the track camera collection and yeah that's it so i'm going to disable this re-enable the normal camera select the normal camera and here we go perfect next you'll see we have a collection for lights i've just got one simple softbox in here coming from the top right hand side um that's just by default i like that i think it looks cool i can check the shading without too much trouble perfection Next, we have a tab for objects and you can put all of your objects in there. So now we're gonna go for the workspaces that we have. So by default, we are in the IG workspace for Instagram. Again, a resolution 1080 by 1350. You can check it right here. Bang, bang. But say for example, if you like to shoot in 1080 or even 4K, you'd probably like a widescreen variant of this. Cause if we change the resolution now, by the way, you can change the resolution by going to the render presets and go here, or you can type it in down here can change it to 4k as you can see this is kind of weird i mean it's not bad but it's a lot of empty space here which yeah i personally don't like i mean there's nothing wrong with it but it bothers me so i've created a widescreen workspace so if we click here on the left hand side bang we now have a widescreen workspace so as you can see we have our camera view on the left hand side we still have our viewport on the right hand side here so if i move the camera and stuff you can see it's moving in real time we can see exactly what the scene is seeing but it just gives you more flexibility to see in full. And because of that, we also have the shader editor here. And as you can see, I've created a HDRI shader. So this by default is in the startup file. So no matter what, instead of you having to create a HDRI every single time, all you need to do is connect this color output to the background and load in your environment texture, your HDRI, and that's it. Simple, your HDRI texture is set up instead of you having to create it every single time. As you can see, I've actually added a few more things. I've added a multiply and curves. The multiply is if you wanted to add a specific color into your HDRI, so say I wanted it to be a cooler tint, I can just add some blue. Let me go extreme so you can see. Yeah, see? <laughs> but by default, it's just normal. And the curves, again, if you wanted to change the exposure of the HDRI, you can do that if you want just useful if you don't you could just leave it just connect your hdri and that's it amazing incredible sensational next we have our productivity workspace now this workspace is a little weird it's a bit unconventional but bam 
you can see we now have more of a full viewport here we have the camera view in the top right corner so we can see what the camera sees in real time it's a little bit smaller we have the properties tab here on the right hand side and the outliner strangely enough on the left hand side now i'm in here sometimes when i'm modeling um it's just clean nothing really intrusive it is a bit different because the outline is on the left hand side again you don't need to use this if you don't want to in fact if you do want to get rid of any of these tabs all you need to do is hover over it right click and delete that's it we next have a shade in tab where if you have an ig ratio instagram or bam you can see it here and you'll see your viewport and you can have the materials and stuff or again if you're just in a widescreen you'll have the shader here by default anyway but it gives you the option to have a different sort of shader viewport sculpt and uv editing is default again if you want to delete it you can you can just hover over it and delete i next have set up a graph editor so as you just saw for the last scene i was smoothing out the keys this is super useful if you want to do stuff like animate camera movement or use modifiers of the curve editor i in fact have a video on animating camera movement like handheld look check it out in the description below but yeah this is just a graph editor instead of setting up a scene every single time and again you could use it with this ratio or if you wanted to do like a widescreen it would work as well it would still look it would still look pretty good so yeah rendering of course you just go in there to check your rendering we have the default compositor well, it's not default because I've got it to look way better. If we render out a scene, the rendered result will be on the left-hand side and the viewer would be on the right-hand side. So if we were to composite and we were to view our nodes, we can see what's being seen in the composite at the bottom and the right-hand side and what's being rendered on the left-hand side. And again, this variant is just for Instagram. Yeah, it will have a better ratio for you to see it a lot easier. It fills up more of the screen. So that is my startup file. You can also see on the right hand side, now that we have denoising, I've set it up so if you wanted to enable denoise, you can just, you know, click on viewport or render. You can change it to NLM or optics. By default, we've got high contrast. It's on filmic. Again, if it's too much contrast, just change it to none. The passes, I've enabled all of the passes I use. All of these sensational passes. And it's a similar story for Eevee. We've got ambient occlusion on, bloom, screen scratch, reflections. We don't have motion blur. Our volumetrics has the default tie size of eight because I don't know what your system is like. And we also have our render passes. Bam, bam, bam. So yeah, if you found this video useful, let me know in the comments below. Also, by the way, all you need to do to make this your startup file, before I forget, is open up the startup file, then click file, defaults, save startup file. And then every single time you create a new file, you have the startup file. If you want to customize it and create your own startup file, again, all you need to do is create a new window, do your changes. For example, if you want to like, I don't know, add a shader editor down here or something, then go to file, defaults, save a startup file. And then every time you open up, your startup file will look like that. Perfect. Alright guys, well I shall see you on the next one. Peace.